see nonstop. <laughs> and we're live. We are back at 360 today. I'm here with my good friend Pfeiffer Garbizi, who's a filmmaker in VR, and she's been shooting with this amazing Google Jump camera, which has 16 cameras in it. Yep, it's a ring of 16 GoPros for stereo, 360 up to 8K resolution. Very nice. We also have Courtney here, Hi. and she's got her little puppies that she's been taking care of. Mm -hmm. And if you see them running around in the background, just you know, pay attention to us. Um, so tell me a little bit about the project that you're doing with this Google GoPro jump camera. Absolutely. Um, so the project, project that we um, got approved with Google is called Traverse. Um, mm -hmm. It's based on the biblical story of the falling of the Tower of Babel. Um, and it is an interactive, immersive art piece. Get more immersive with our live camera. It's oh, yeah. Sit up, and lean in, lean in you a want bit to come more. In? All yeah, right. yeah, lean All in. Right, so, here you go. so tell me, what is the biggest challenge with shooting with this 360 camera? Because I think we got a lot of VR followers out there who are very interested in this. With the Odyssey, mm -hmm. um, well, the Odyssey obviously, as you can see, does not have a Zenith and Nader, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Zenith is the top, and the bottom. Um, there are no cameras on it, so if um, if you, you know, shoot something that is documentary style, well, if you shoot anything, you're not going to get that top and bottom. What you get in the final stitch is sort of a blurry color where the Zenith and Nader would be. Mm -hmm. And, um, what we proposed, you know, as a solution, um, for the, uh, for Traverse is we shot in a complete wrap 360 blue screen room and mm -hmm. we are... Uh, color keying out all the blue, yeah. and we have a full CG environment around them. Sweet, so, so that way you don't have any issue with the top and yeah. the bottom. All of that is composited. So. Super smart. Yeah, and then um, the you know the other solution, of course, if you're shooting documentary footage um, or just footage in a in a real life environment where you want all of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got puppies trying to get at it. We're trying to keep them away because. Oh, they think it's cool too. I know. Um, so you can uh, you can plate in a forward and bottom um, camera, um, but you know that won't be stereo. That's something that can't be done in the Jump Assembler, which is the Google Cloud um, stitching platform. Um, so you know there are creative solutions to this. Um, the biggest question that I always get whenever I set up a 360 camera is like, how far away should you be in order to make it stitch properly? With this camera, what have you found is like the ideal distance? Um, I would say four feet away is pretty much the closest you're going to get. I really like intimacy. So like, we're talking one, almost like... There you're really safe. If you reach out your hand like that, your hand is going to start... Yeah. That's like right on the verge. Mm. So, I mean, um, we do have scenes in Traverse... Um, where the, uh, especially in River, River is like one of the sequences which is more about like our connection to nature. Um, and in that we have people who are like reaching for the camera and they're throwing this ribbon. Um, and so for that, like we try to keep the character um, about like five feet away and just keep, keep them centered. And then you can do sweet spot stitching essentially, which is where you keep track of which um, stereo pair your actor is between. And then you can um, give that data to the jump assembler saying, you know, this character, the most important spot is between camera one and two. Um, and it'll um, optimize for that. Mm -hmm. So this camera does amazing stereo. Does it also do six off or six degrees of freedom where you can kind of like look around a little bit? No, no okay. 360 rig um, can really can give you six off. off. Um, Just the Lytro stuff. Yeah, I mean the Lytro stuff, you get about a foot in each direction of mm. extra, yeah. of, of room to maneuver. Um, and then the screen goes black. At least that's like where they were at for Hallelujah. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. With this rig, I see it has a giant battery power unit, which yeah. we can kind of see back can here. Can you lift it up? Um, yeah, yeah. Do all the I cameras some of these. turn on at once? They do, yeah. <sighs> so this comes with... Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Getting a little work out in there. Yeah, so this, this battery pack, the Hypercine, um, it is, um, you know, it's four batteries on the inside. 
you turn it on, um, it can last, it lasts, you know, frankly, for about, like, four hours shooting. Nice. that's pretty great. Um, Considering how big this unit is, that's, that's pretty astounding. Yeah, and because of this issue where it doesn't really capture a full 360 image on the bottom, you can easily have this underneath your camera and mm -hmm. not have a problem. I love how on here it tells us how many hours and how many yeah. minutes for the runtime. I would definitely, I mean, you can see it's jumping around a little bit, I would definitely not um, be too confident about doing that. And then you'll see when we turn the camera on that this actually jumps down even lower. Um, yeah. Let's do so, it. Okay. So, um, do you want to put this down? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can put it right in front of our viewers so they can All right. a little bit of a closer Splendid. view. Splendid. So it's using an XLR cable for the power too. That's it pretty is, interesting. Yeah. I've always used that for Sound. audio. Yeah. That is the plastic. So um, you can see over here they've labeled the yeah. master camera for us. Um, we'll actually, I might closer. here. Kevin, why don't you um, why don't you lift up your live streaming camera and show the guts of this bad Ooh. boy? Um, so this is pretty cool. They've daisy chained all the cameras together. Um, this is camera one. You can see that they uh, they have a stopper here, but then all the other uh, cameras are daisy chained from camera one. It's all Ethernet. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. Um, and then uh, when you turn on camera one, you might want to put it back down again, Kevin. Yeah. Um, so I've just hit power on camera one, Seem and all now turning. all of the Whoa. other cameras turn on. That's a trip. Yeah, so it's a pretty, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful solution. It's still sort of the DIY that I love mm -hmm. about 360 video and VR in general, but um, it is a masterful, masterful solution that you'd expect from Google, obviously. Um, um, now they're currently working with Yi instead yes, of the GoPro. that's correct. I have a relationship with Yi. We're actually live streaming this right now with the Insta360 One, in case you guys are interested in what 360 camera we're using for the live stream. I'll put a link in the description as well. But um, Yi recently sent me their camera to do live streaming. And I know they got the little ones on here. They do. So the, the Yi Halo is 16 as well, yeah. but they now have right. the uh, incorporated Zenith camera, which is, um, I mean, obviously something that would save you a lot of uh, heartbreak. Yeah. And you actually have an LCD display underneath, so you're not mm. working with a master camera anymore, but this can cause complications on sets and more extreme climates. Um, for example, some, um, some folks just came back from shooting Disco Discovery, uh, what's it called, Traveler, mm -hmm. um, and they sh were shooting in Antarctica, and they had both the Odyssey and the Yi Halo, and the Yi Halo stopped functioning in the cold. So. That's an issue. You know, the GoPros might overheat, but uh, you can still shoot with them in Antarctica. Exactly, yeah. Pretty so cool. every every camera, whether it gets outdated or not, I still think has its own unique place. Absolutely. Like the Sam the Sam uh, Sung twenty sixteen is like the smallest one for putting on an eagle's back. Mm -hmm. If you get the Samsung twenty seventeen, it's got this extended piece, and you just can't pull it off. So each little piece, not eagle I think, friendly anymore. not eagle friendly. This one Antarctica friendly. There's the That's new right. one. Not That's right. very interesting. Um, so in order to now power them on, what would you do next to hit the record button? Is it just on that one master? Yeah, so it's just a classic record on the GoPros. Um, so now we're shooting. Oh, we're actually recording something. Yeah, oh my God, should we back up? Um, yeah, so um, best back practice. Up. We'll have You're the puppies. You're not going to see any of the stuff around here, frankly, but you'll see... You know, I would say that shooting something like over here, you're going to be safe. You could sweet spot me in. Obviously, yeah. you don't want me like reaching in toward the camera. If but, I'm here um, with the puppies, is this okay? You think? Yeah, I think you'd be fine. Um, I want Google to look back at this and say, oh, Kevin loves animals. I mean, I'm sure they know that already. I know, that's true. This is, uh, this is being sent to Google right now. Well, no, it's not. It's, <laughs> I'm um, joking. I, yeah, I have to <laughs> upload it. So, yeah. Um, essentially, but the workflow is like after you, um, after you capture, uh, is uh, you, well, on the bottom, mm -hmm. all the SD cards are still available. So basically, power down the cameras, flip the camera, um, you remove all the SD cards, and they have like a, a, a SD Little card box. reader by by Lexar that can read nine SD cards at a time. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I find 
generally when I insert all of the 9SD cards that are possible that um, one of them has error on it. Um, so usually like I only insert it one block at a time, which is three. But uh, it goes really quickly. You don't have to deal with like all the fussing. Jolie, I can imagine I do it's like cool two switch. usually, like two SD cards at a time and it's just like overbearing. So yeah. I can't even imagine that the workflow associated with this. Notice this guy's got like a little dink there. That came like this, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember seeing this the first day you got it, and you're like, it still works, even though it's got this little piece here. I mean... It's, it's kind of got character. They sent me the box, and it says tested and ready to go, so... Sweet. You know. um, but yeah, it's definitely been used by other creators in the past, which I, is... I wonder, like, we probably know the person who did that. If you know the person who took out a little chunk of this GoPro Odyssey, Kevin, write Kevin. a comment below. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so curious. All right, so now when we're all done shooting, how do we power it down again? When so we... first you power down the cameras. So neat. I see them turning off. Cool. And then we hit the Yep, and button. then you can just um, hit one of the other buttons, and then it powers it down. Very nice. And then to charge this, you plug it into an outlet, obviously. Yeah, correct. Cool. Um, you can also charge the batteries inside of it individually um, and or use them to charge USB devices, which is an interesting um, thing, but I haven't done it. Very cool. Um, so another issue I want to talk about in relation with, um, you know, or I shouldn't say issue, but something that I found quite humorous that we were discussing the other day in the car was in relation with your project and Google censorship. In, in oh, Google's not censoring you. I know, I know they're not censoring you, but we were sort of questioning whether that may, may occur down the line. Well, based on, let, let's explain. So there's a scene in your project that involves nudity. Yeah, so my project does not involve any um, complete nudity, um, but you know it is representation of biblical goings on and uh, the Bible and other sort of mythological tales like it um, do have this um, sort of mystical eroticism to mm -hmm. them. Um, and, you know, we felt it was definitely necessary to have sort of semi-revealing costumes and just playing with sort of different tropes on sexuality throughout different eras of time. And uh, we were making jokes because um, there are some nip slips. Um, and, uh, or it's not exactly a nip, nip slip if the costume never covered them. Yeah, totally. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what... Um, Google thinks about it. I think they'll be could, thrilled, could you, frankly. Yeah. Be thrilled. I, 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 well, I know that you didn't mention to him, and I just know, like, corporations, companies like this can be very, like, ridiculous with, you know, things in that nature, like Facebook and things, just because they want to be, like, PG across the board. On I think Google has an idea of what I was going to create. Yeah. Um, I definitely gave them a pretty clear description of okay. our approach to the topic. Yeah. We did not um, send a script breakdown, but yeah. I don't foresee any problems. Um, you know, I like to joke around, but uh, I think I think it'll be well received in both the European and US markets. I know Europe is much more um, forgiving or accepting of nudity um, and um, it has its strong artistic merit in what you're portraying as well. Oh, absolutely. I think, I mean, this is, I collaborated on this with um, some of my very dear friends from film school who are, um, one of them is a director and cinematographer of male erotica. Um, and he just, he just knows how to like work with actors and get them extremely comfortable um, and knows how to like bring this beautiful sensuality to scenes. Um, I repeat, erotica, not porn. Um, and, um, you know, showing the human form in, in beautiful, but also sort of different lenses um, than you'd classically view, like, naked people mm -hmm. in. What was your favorite shot that you got off the camera? Um, well, everybody's is different. So we did some screeners already of the, of the rough cut, or of the stitches that came off of the cloud. Um, and everybody has sort of a different um, favorite scene. Um, 
and they each have sort of a theme on the human psyche. Um, the, the overall intent of the project essentially is that you begin in this void, in this white void, and there are figures surrounding you with this vein that's shared through all of them. Mm. Um, and then in the shattering of the Tower of Babel, there's like a, a cracking noise, like a pipe breaking and water rushing in. And then the figures all open their eyes and these portals appear on their stomachs. Um, and through the portals, uh, you can select a portal, it's gaze based, um, and you can toggle into this sort of diversification of language and culture, um, which is our analogy to you know, after the shattering of the Tower of Babel, there was this wild diversification of languages, and um, God says, uh, you know, essentially that man should not be able to understand each other all yeah. together anymore, which is, I think is a very interesting story. Um, and so we, you know, pick these different themes that really are um, evocative of different parts of the human psyche. Um, one of them is called luxury. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of about like the spoils of wealth and um, the um, sort of desire to control other people mm -hmm. as a form of you know, elation and power, um, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah. So this was definitely like one of the darker scenes for me. Um, this is one of um, my, uh, the assistant um, director, Kylie Sang, this is her favorite scene. Um, and uh, it's it's very like the costuming is far out. We have like two of the um, elites in the mm -hmm. scene have these super long toenails. They have like maybe ten inch long glittering toenails, um, which are like right up in the camera. And um, there is like their servant is like tied to this harp, and he has to come around and serve them wine. Um, and, I mean, I think all of the scenes have their own aspect of humor, darkness, and joy. Yeah. Uh, whether that joy is founded in a um, positive place is... Totally. Yeah. Um, where can people see the piece when it's coming out? So the piece will be on Daydream. Cool. Of course. So, you gotta get your name Daydream, or you can probably find it through you. YouTube, maybe? Eventually. So there will be a non-interactive version on YouTube unless YouTube comes up with an interactivity solution. I think that they probably will when they see this piece. Well, I mean, that's what Daydream's for, right? Yeah. So Google says to me when I get the camera, you know, they say you have to distribute, um, it, not exclusivity, but you have to distribute via Daydream or YouTube. Yeah. So you should, you, they need to, you should at least encourage them to now that you have sway there. Because I've said all that I can, but a way on your mouse that you can scroll over, just like with the eye gaze, and you just hold your mouse over it, and then it and goes like into the next spots. YouTube. Yeah, because yeah. that's something that I've always wanted to do is tether different YouTube. It, it's something that I mentioned to them several years ago that they, or maybe a year ago, but that they should be tethering different narratives because then I can take yeah. multiple 360 videos, put them together, similar to today's videos with us having three different uh, live videos that happened each at a different point in the day. First one being us starting to cook steak, the second one being eating the steak, the third one being an interview with Pfeiffer here and the Google Chump. Um, so anyway, I think that's... Well, I'll, I'll um, certainly send them a message. Yeah. So let's plug your Instagram right now before I forget. It is. I'm sure. So um, my Instagram and Twitter handle is at virtually Pfeiffer. And you need to check her out because she has amazing posts that are just like insane. They're always lit and just perfect. And you'll um, see some behind the scenes from um, both the shoot, the traverse shoot, um, which will definitely give you a better idea of the sort of stuff totally. I'm talking about. And also, we just shot um, DJ Cuber um, scratching vinyl at Heron Arts, which was super beautiful. So and, and we both might, of those things are upcoming. What's we also handle? might have. Pardon? What's the handle? At virtually Pfeiffer. Right. She's adding you right now. All right. And we also might have a little collaboration with this coming up too, but we can't talk too much about that. Local rapper possibly spit some beats out. We'll see. Um, also, before I forget, I want you to talk a little bit about your neuro project that you're doing, uh, neuro VR and education. Sure, yeah. So um, this is a project um, through Facebook, Oculus. Um, essentially, 
Oculus is going to be distributing its Rift headsets throughout California public schools, sort of getting that like Apple in the door advantage, um, which I think is really smart and really positive for both the VR community and education. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about things, well, I've been very interested in sort of brain machine interfaces and the possibility of, um, you know, just this new era of communication. Um, I think we see the beginnings of it mm -hmm. with VR, but you won't truly get to a place of real VR without these brain machine interfaces. Um, so I, I really, but I also really am concerned about ethical um, development of these devices and the field in general. So um, my uh, contribution to that is to create this piece called the Neuroexplorer mm -hmm. VR, um, where high schoolers can learn about the development of the brain, the different parts of the brain, why they think the way they think, um, and um, you know how your brain shapes your perception of reality. Nice, um, and that will be available through Oculus eventually, or through some form yep. of that. Yep, that'll be on Rift for at least three months exclusively. Nice. So working both the Facebook leads and the Google leads. Pfeiffer, you need to check her out if you haven't already. Thanks, um, Kevin. Yeah, and I think that's all the time we have today for 360 Today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, also, you can find me on YouTube at Kevin Coons. Um, so yeah, have a great day and remember to subscribe, share this with your friends if you feel they'd be interested to know about this amazing 360 camera. I saw your face there, just like go, oh no. <laughs> um, did you have to sign insurance forms for this? Um, sort of. I mean, it's my responsibility, <laughs> yes. All right. So thank you guys again for watching. Have a great day. Thanks, Kevin. Bye-bye.